Hi everybody, it's Miranda from Custom by Miranda. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on adding a drip to this tumbler. I'm going to be using Countercultures Nice and Thick. And I'll also be using Counterculture Artist Resin Epoxy for the drip. I just go ahead and I did equal parts of the Artist Resin, the part A and the part B. Just stir it up until it's nice and clear. There are other ways to make it drip, but today I was going to show you how to use the nice and thick instead of having to mix up your epoxy and sit and wait for it to thicken up and hope that it's thick enough that it doesn't run all the way down the cup. I'll be using acrylic paint to tint the drip to try to match the color of glitter I have on the bottom of my tumbler. My tumbler has already been covered with a fabric and uh, has epoxy on it. I have my popsicle sticks for mixing in the color and the nice and thick. I'm going to be adding some glow powder to it as well. I like to try to mix my epoxy with the least amount of bubbles as possible, but typically once you add the colorant and the nice and thick to it, the bubbles kind of dissipate. <clears throat> now I use Countercultures Artist Resin regularly and I use their fast set, but I do not do fast set for my drips. I know some people do, some people have, and it works great for them, but you have very quick work time with the fast set. And once you add acrylic paint to it, it cuts that time down even more. And then adding the nice and thick, it, it goes fast. So I prefer not to do that. I do have this little tiny little torch lighter that I like to pop some bubbles with beforehand and let it, let it sit and let the bubbles come up for a minute. I'm sorry if you hear background noise. It's my fan in my room. I have two fans that suck all the air out and blow it outside. So first, I'm going to add a little bit of the glow powder before I add the colorant. One of the I used this one to base my cup to match the glitter that I had put on there. But I think it's going to end up being a little more yellow than I wanted, so I also have an orange to add to give it a little more of an orange color because I'm going for an orange drip today. But this one is a glow-in-the-dark one, so I'm hoping that I can get, even through the color, get it to, to glow a little bit for me. That's just a little bit of the glow powder that I use, and it's the glow powder I got. I got it from uh, Madame Glitter, so I'm just gonna mix that in very well. <clears throat> now I'm going to add <clears throat> my paint. Now I'm gonna use. A popsicle stick for this because this isn't apple barrel paint it's a very thick acrylic paint I don't want to add too much to it at once so I'm going to add it a little bit at a time until I can get the color that I'm looking for <clears throat> and I'll probably go a little bit darker than I would like because the nice and thick is white and so it will tone down the paint that I put in here, oh, just, a, just a smidge.
have done a few drip tumblers with the nice and thick and I prefer how that comes out over letting it sit because I'm I'm a very impatient crafter and if I have to sit and wait and wait and wait sometimes I do give up and move on a little too fast and then my drips are not exactly what I would like them to be almost to the color that I'm looking for making sure that I scrape my sides nicely and make it all sure it's all mixed up so that way there's not any weird color streaks in the drip add a little bit of the orange to the glow and the dark orange to it I think that is a good color that will match the bottom of that tumbler pretty well. I had already glittered the rim the same color just in case because sometimes it does get thinner up top and I wanted to make sure it had some sort of matching color coverage underneath. As you can see it's still pretty, pretty runny. Color's good, so I'm ready to add my nice and thick to it. And with the nice and thick, you're going to want to do a little bit at a time. Even though it is a powder, it does clump. And if you don't get the clumps worked out well enough in your mix, you'll be able to see it in your drips and then once you put it on the cup you're kind of stuck with it so I just do a little at a time keep my big spoon so I usually just press it up against the side to make sure I get all the clumps out so I'm Using this might take a few minutes longer of mixing time, but the drips come out so much nicer this way, especially if you get it to the right consistency. I'm going to mix it and scrape my sides, make sure I don't have any of the nice and thick just hanging out in there. Add a little bit more. You want to add it a little at a time because you don't want it to get too thick too fast. Once you put it in there, you can't take it out. But you can always add more. You should always be wearing gloves. I, I'm really bad at wearing them when I mix my epoxy, but once I get it to the right consistency before I put it on the cup, I will put my gloves on. Just in case I accidentally touch it while I'm moving it around the tumbler. It's starting to thicken up a little bit. It's still a little r runnier than what we'd like. Sorry guys, I keep bumping my tripod.
to scrape the sides, make sure I don't have any <clears throat> big clumps in here. Now once I do mix this and I get it to a good thick consistency, I will let it sit. <laughs> Typically for a good like maybe five minutes to thicken up a little bit more. Because it will thicken up pretty quick. Still a little running, but it's getting there. For those of you who have not tried any of Countercultures products, you should. I love all their epoxies. It gives this beautiful shine, shiny finish to all all of my cups there that's what I use on all of them and they have the nice and thick for the drips and then I also use their uh, quick coat on my fabric cups I will do my um, three coats of Mod Podge on top of the fabric and then I'll do a layer of quick coat on top of that once those are dry before I do my epoxy to make sure I don't end up with spots where the epoxy soaks into the fabric. Right, a little bit more. I should probably do it. You can see how it gets clumpy even though it's a powder. And as I was saying, counterculture, they also have some awesome epoxy colorants, which I have yet to buy. I mean to, but a little at a time. And they also have glitters, micas, they have all different things. But I love using their facet epoxy. I used it to do my first coat on this tumbler so it was ready after two hours for me to do another coat and then add my drips. Now when you add your drips, some people just get their smooth coat on, add their drips and then don't put any more epoxy over it that is fine it's a matter of personal preference I however usually do a coat or two of epoxy over top of my drips so that way you can still feel them but it's not too big of a difference in the feel of the tumbler since the drips will give it more like a 3D effect. It's 
it's starting to get really thick. <clears throat> and the more you mix it, the warmer it gets. So the thicker it gets, faster. Now with some of these, I will probably go on at it, let it drip down. I like to let it drip, then I flip it back and forth so that way it goes up and down, and then I usually add more up here once it gets thicker after I already add my drips. So I do a little at a time so that way it stays thick up here and it doesn't get too thin up by the rim from gravity pulling the drips down. I test as I put it on there and see how long it takes it to run down. Still running at a pretty good speed though. Alright, so get rid of the tiny popsicle stick. Man, teeny, teeny, teeny bit more of this, and I'm going to use the fat, the big regular size popsicle stick to add my drips on. It's a lot easier to mix this with a bigger stick. I just only had one left because I apparently ran out, so I had to run upstairs and get my wax, waxing strips. sure that last little bit I mixed in is nice and mixed in there. Like I said earlier on, having the bubbles doesn't matter because you have to do a lot, a lot of mixing after you put in the nice and thick anyways. Alright, let that sit for a minute. I'll put my gloves on. All the stuff out of the way that I don't need at the moment. I can actually start to feel the cup warming out, so it's probably about ready. All right, so when I put it on there, I have my gloves on. I take a little bit, and just dab it on around the rim. And I have a baby wipe for little streaks such as that. Close enough to where the drips are going to be, it's okay as long as it doesn't streak down too far. <clears throat> I like to bring it pretty close to the edge. Doing it this way, it's going to start to move around the cup this way because of the way gravity works but once I get this first bit on I'll tip it up and I'll add more to it so that way it drips down the way I want it to see this side's already starting to move
And if it drips on the inside, that's okay. I go in afterwards and pop all the, that stuff off, clean the rim up with my X-Acto knife, do some sanding. Then I do a layer of epoxy. But now you'll see that it will start to pull down. Wherever you add any more, it's going to drip down. <clears throat> you can help the drips down if you would like. So that way it gives them a directionality of, okay, you want one here, you want one here. getting stringy because it's getting thicker. Now at this point I try to keep it as straight as I can so my drips don't go sideways on me. And the more you put on there, the further your drips will go. And it's a matter of personal preference how far down you like your drips. Now this particular tumbler is not going to have any decals or any names on it so I can have the drips go as far down as I would like. Now but if you were to have a decal or a name you'd want to make sure that it does not drip down to where your name needs to be. Some people will put the decals on first then do the drips so they can manage it that way. I end up doing my drips, know how far down I need them to go, and then add the decals afterwards. So that way there isn't no accidental coverage on them. Getting back around to the front here. As you can see, it's starting to thin out up top, but my epoxy is getting thicker as we sit here, so mm -hmm. now I can just go through and add some up here a lot quicker because I'm not worrying about if I have enough drips or not. I don't like, even though like I said I don't have a decal, like I can let it go down as far as I would like. I don't want it to go all the way down the cup though. Not my intentions anyway. So after I get this little round here done. I'm going to be tipping it upside down so that way it can start running back this way and thickening back up down here. And that way my drips don't get too far down my cup. Which 
got to be careful because then there's spots like right here that it's pretty thick up here so it's wanting to go right off the top. You know, this is where I'll go through and fix my drips. If they're wonky at all. Or if I'm not liking how they look. If I want them a little bit thicker, I can go through and make them a little bit thicker and wider right here. Super stringy. And it's starting to roll back off the lid, so I'm going to flip it back this way. See how it all came back up and thickened up up there? Thickened up in the top because I flipped it back upside down. I like some of these drips, like, I got a whole bunch that are really long, and I got a bundle of short ones right here, so I'm probably going to drag this guy down a little bit. This guy down a little bit further. I'm like, I got some space over here on these. drip there, another little drip here so that way it doesn't look as gappy, I guess is the word I'm looking for. It's so all running back down this way now. <clears throat> so I'm going to tip it back up, side down, and let it run. And I just sit here and go back and forth for a while until I get it, the drips, as long as I would like them. And make sure I have the top as thick as I would like it without it being too see-through. And then once this, I'm done flipping it, and I'm ready that for it to just do its thing and it's thick enough. I will throw it on my cup turner and actually spin it so that way I don't have it sitting one direction too long and it's starting to move on me or whatnot. Flip it back again. <clears throat> I'm liking how the drips are. They're nicely down, not too far down, not too far up. There are some bubbles in it, so I'm probably going to take here in a second and hit it with the torch real quick to pop some of those bubbles. And I'm adding a little bit on some of these drips so they go down a little bit further, but not too far down. Set that down right there. Grab my little torch. It's just a little torch lighter, nothing crazy. Go through and pop the bubbles that are all over this thing. They are pretty well popped. It's starting to thin out up top again, so I'm going to flip it back this way. Eventually, when it's thick enough, I'll probably just add a nice thick rim at the top. And I'll go through and check for bubbles. Pop them.
I do have a better torch that I use when I'm actually epoxying the cups. But I don't feel like pulling the big guy out just for a couple little bubbles in my my drips. We're starting to bubble it back that way, so we're gonna flip it back this way again. So I don't want them to be too thin on the bottom at the bottom of the drip or at the top, but I don't want it to be super thick. As you can see on this one right here that I accidentally touched. Super thick down at the bottom. Because eventually it'll stop running and it'll just give it a little nub right there. So I usually work those up that way, so that way there's not any crazy blobs at the ends of the drips. Oops, sorry guys. I'm trying to stay in frame and I'm too close to my... So I'm start flipping back this way again. These you just kind of let gravity do its thing. And since the epoxy is already thickening up from adding the acrylic and the nice and thick, it's going to set up pretty quickly so that way if you want to epoxy it here in like say an hour or two, you, you absolutely will be able to. The thicker epoxy to the top rim here. I'm working over my silicone mats so that way if I make a mess, it's alright. I am a very messy crafter. You can see I got I got a little bit on the rooms here, but it's not anything super crazy. It'll be I'll be able to easily take an X-Acto knife to it <clears throat> and pop it off. But that's all I do. I just sit here and wait until I get it to the perfect thickness. And get my drips how I like them. I just go back and forth for a little bit. And then I stick it on my turner and I let it turn this way. And then it, since it's constantly spinning, it doesn't run, it doesn't drip, it just keeps it nice and level and the consistency that I'd like at the top and the consistency that I like at the bottom of my drips. I hope this tutorial helps people. Like I said, it's my first one, so hopefully it wasn't too terrible. Um, please, if you'd like to, you can like or subscribe to my, my channel. I will put down what I use down in the descriptions. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment or reach out, and I will help in any way that I can. Thank you. Here's the tumbler spinning after I got the consistency I wanted with the drips and the top of it as you can see it's pretty thick up top pretty thick on the drips so it's not see-through in many spots and I'll just wait for that to dry and then I'll show 
show it when it is all done. All right, now that the drip is dry, I'm going to go through and clean up the inside and the rim of the tumbler. Be very careful while using an X-Acto knife. Make sure you don't cut yourself. And since I did not clean it up before I did the drip, I just did the one layer of epoxy, then the drip. So I'm going to go through after I clean it up, and I'm going to do a light sanding on the rim. And take this down a little bit to show a little bit of the stainless steel, so that way on my next epoxy, it will have something to adhere to. Then I just take the sandpaper, I go straight across the top to get the rim, make sure there's nothing still attached. I just go through and if there's anything on there, just usually you can scrape it off with your nail. And then I take it at an angle. and sand down so you can see just a teeny tiny bit of the stainless steel. And I do it all the way around. the worst sound in the world. Sorry guys. And when I'm happy with how the rim is, I'm going to stick it on back on the turner, do a coat of epoxy over top, and then it'll be done. And I will show you my next steps after that. After I was done sanding, I took it upstairs and I washed it with Dawn and dried it off. And just did the final layer of epoxy. I will show the, the final results when it is all done. Here is the finished tumbler. Super shiny. Nice smooth finish. You can still feel the drips, but they're nice and sealed in there. Thank you for watching my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and it helped you out.